What's up guys, today I'm going to be going over the Lament and Fallen Guillotine nerf that will be happening next season, and we'll be going over exactly what both nerfs are, and how they'll affect both of the weapons, and overall it's going over if it's going to be good for the game. I wanted to put out this video once we had the list of buffs too, they hinted at buffing linear fusion rifles this season also, and I kind of want to talk about them both at the same time since they're both heavy weapons, but it's been two twabs since these changes have been announced, and we still haven't gotten the twab with buffs in it yet, so I'm just gonna go make this video now, and once we get that twab, I'll make another video about the Linear Fusion Rifles, along with the other buffs that are coming next season. And before we begin with today's video, a, a quick word from this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Red Magic 6, which is a gaming smartphone, which comes loaded with all kinds of equipment and features to optimize mobile gaming. The display is a 165Hz, 6.8 inch, FHD AM OLED display that has up to 500Hz touch refresh rate and this phone comes loaded with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 which is one of the fastest mobile processors in the world and the Red Magic 6 comes loaded with a complete in-house cooling system which they call the i6.0 that has a built-in fan, liquid cooling, and layers of graphite to disperse the heat and incredibly fast air-cooled fast charge to keep up with your gaming. And when I first heard about this phone, I really thought it was going to be a very stripped down smartphone that was really good for gaming. And when I got it in my hands, I realized that was completely not true. This phone runs on an Android operating system that has been optimized for gaming. It has multiple cameras, three microphones, uses USB Type-C ports, and it even comes with a fingerprint scanner that is under the display. So this thing has all the features you want out of a smartphone but it's also extremely good at gaming. And with a price tag right around $600, that is actually not bad. My phone that I have myself, a Pixel 3, when it came out, it cost $800. And today, most of the current phones that come out are well over $1,000 now. And this Red Magic 6 has all the things you need out of a smartphone, but just games at the highest level. Anyways, if you guys want more information about this phone or even to purchase one, you can go ahead and click the link in the comments in the description. There is no special code for this at all, just showing off a really cool gaming smartphone. Anyways, thanks Red Magic for sponsoring today's video. So let's go to begin with the Lament. Looking at what the nerf will be, pretty much it stated that the Lament was still an outlier for sword damage and they're reducing the heavy attack by 16%. So we look at the damage on Carl doing it three light tags to get the full buff, then one heavy tag. Right now the heavy tag hits for 117,000, after nerf it'll go down to 98,000. And that is the only part of the weapon's damage that's getting nerfed is the revved heavy attack. So the full combo right now does 209,000 and that'll go down to 190,000. So the overall combo nerf will only be roughly 9%. And we look at the DPS of this weapon, one combo takes 2.25 seconds. Meaning right now it's almost 93,000 and after nerf it'll go down to 84.5,000. Which if you watch a lot of my videos this season, a lot of the rock launchers in the game can hit almost 90,000 for burst DPS. Now if we look at two combos which pretty much what you have to do is do a few light attacks in between to let your energy recharge enough to be able to do a full combo again. And that takes 6.6 .6 seconds, meaning DPS of two is 71,000 right now. And after nerf, it'll go down to 65.4,000. So just looking at the numbers right now compared to what they'll be after the nerf, right now they are kind of in line with some of the other best things in the entire game, but they're like right at the top of that list. Some of the other rockets, as I mentioned, can do almost 90,000 burst DPS also, but that's only over like two, maybe three rockets, and it quickly falls off, just like the Lament does to be fair. But the Lament is also really good at pretty much everything else in the game. It was still one of the best all-around options, as long as you weren't way under light, for example, Grandmasters. You can use your light tags for lower tier enemies. It's really good at killing majors, ultras, bosses, and you got health back on hit. So you weren't really punished for playing close at all, especially with things like well in the game. So overall, the Mint was still one of the best all-around weapons in the game. Really easy to use and you were really never punished for using it, which you kind of should be for using a close range weapon. But it's kind of like a different conversation of the difficulty of the game because of well allowing you to pretty much just face tank any boss in the game. But now after the 16% nerf, you can see the DPS is still pretty good. It's not quite at the top of the top of some of the best options in the game, but still not bad by any means. So I think Lament will still be perfectly fine and will continue to be one of the best picks for just general gameplay. Up next will be the Fallen Guillotine. And pretty much what they said about this one is if you just look at Legendary Swords, it was being used the most by far. So what they've decided to do is increase the cost of a heavy attack from four to six, which is a pretty interesting move, which won't really affect the DPS numbers itself, but will affect the total damage output numbers so if we go ahead and look at the damage numbers on Carl, all the numbers we'll need for the different testing. Doing six light attacks to get the damage number of all light attacks from times zero all the way up to times five roll blade. And doing a full heavy attack with times five, which hits six times as you saw right there. 
Look in the rate of fire of one combo. That takes roughly 3.1 seconds, which means the DPS is roughly 58,000, which isn't that good, which is why I'm glad the nerf is to like the cost of the attack and not the damage because the DPS of Guillotine and other legendary swords really isn't that good right now. The only good news about sword DPS is over multiple combos, it doesn't really fall off because you don't really have to reload. Over two combos, it still does 55,000 DPS. So it doesn't really have the peak of some of the other top options, but the sustained DPS is still pretty good. But the thing that will be changing with this nerf is the total damage output. It'll drop by roughly 15.7%, which is quite a lot, but not maybe as much as you think when the cost of heavy attack is 50% more after the nerf. And that is because the bulk of the total damage is from light attacks, which got me to think, what would happen if we just throw out heavy attacks and just use all of our ammo for light attacks? So doing 11 light attacks, which would be the same amount of ammo you'd use for a combo, you'd now do way more damage at 235,000 total damage output per combo, but the DPS does fall to 46,000. And we use our entire reserves of 55 online tax instead of throwing in heavy tax the total damage output will be 1.24 million which is pretty much what it is right now if we use heavy tax so if you just use light tax instead of heavy tax after the nerf you pretty much have the same total damage output but just slightly lower dps which brings me to the conversation of was this a good nerf or a good change for the weapon and pretty much their goal with it is to make the other legendary swords more viable and right now, I think the issues with the three different sword types, which are Adaptive, the Vortex, then also the Caster Frames. I think the Adaptive and the Vortex do pretty much the same damage per heavy attack, but the Vortex does that same damage over an area, so it's going to be a little bit better for Ad Clear. Then for the Caster Frames, they do a little bit less damage than either of the other two frames, but they do that damage at a range, but at the cost of 8 ammo per heavy attack. So right now, the reason the Vortex is the most used is because it is pretty much the same as the Adaptive, but does its damage over an area. Then the Vortex are used over the casters because it's just simply not worth using 8 ammo for a caster heavy attack. Just for the advantage of having range, which really isn't necessary because you can pretty much just get right in the face of every enemy in the game, unless you're doing something like Grandmasters. So the way they decided to fix this was make the Vortex heavy attack cost more ammo, which makes the adaptive frame heavy attack more worthwhile compared to the vortex frame heavy attack. So I think this does solve one of the issues, but it doesn't make the caster frames better in any way. What I would have liked to see instead, especially given the fact that the legendary sword DPS really isn't that good. So I don't think nerfing any of them really makes sense. I think buffing the caster and the adaptive frames to be more in line with the G team would have been the better play. And the way I would have done that is increase the damage of the adaptive frame heavy attack. That way it would be a little bit different than the vortex heavy attack. The vortex heavy attack would still be relevant because it do the damage over the area, but the adaptive would be a little bit more damage overall, but only on a single target. So that would make sense there. Then I would have reduced the cost of heavy attack for the cast of frames to make them more viable and not feel like you're just wasting your ammo every single time you do a heavy attack. And I think that would have been a way better way to balance the three different frames for legendary swords instead of just making the guillotine worse. Because as you see, the DPS numbers of these legendary swords really aren't that high because we're slowly getting to the point where a slug shotgun, which is a special weapon, will out DPS a lot of the heavy options, which isn't quite ideal. So overall, I don't think this change in particular will really change much. I still think Guillotine will be the go-to for legendary swords, which is why I'm kind of scratching my head because I don't really think this will do anything. And I think the better way to make the other two sword frames go up in usage rates would have been the buffs I proposed. But overall, we'll just have to see once the update comes out. And overall, those are my thoughts on these two changes. Neither of them are going to be too disruptive to the meta, and both weapons will still be pretty good overall. Anyways, like usual, let me know what you guys think about this topic. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.